So here are my here are my goals. Thank you. So here are my here's what we're going to work on. Number one, our first goal is to help you think about your practice. So to actually start growth, we have to think about how you think about your practice. So that's the first thing that we have to do a little bit, and we're going to do some groundwork on how you think about your practice. And I'm going to share with you a couple of foundational thinking tools to help you wrap your brain around a couple of things that will support as a foundation to goal setting. Two, I'm going to have you spend a little bit of time looking at 2021 and then looking at 2022 to learn from. And one of the things I've learned from my life and also coaching other people is that some of us have an experience and some of us have an experience that they learned from. <laughs> and so one of the most important things is to take a moment to learn from your experiences. And we're going to use 2021 as kind of a learning experience to look at and think about. And then we're going to really start a growth plan today and we're going to do some fundamental work around that today. Um, so those are my three big goals for today. Now to lay the groundwork, the first thing I want to do is talk about what we consider the foundations for growth. And we need to have just a brief conversation about this. If you're looking to grow your practice, your legal skills are the bedrock. They're the bottom of the practice, right? Your ability to practice law. Now, my experience is your ability to practice law, serve, take care of clients. Most lawyers after 10 years are about as good as they're going to get in this particular area. They get more improved, they get better with time, but they're about 90% cooked. Like they're, they're not going to be transformatively better. So really what causes the growth in the practice, both for gross revenue and net income are four critical business skills. And so if you're taking notes, you wanna write these down. Critical business skill number one is time management slash focus management. So if you're trying to take your practice up to the next level, the most important thing to start to work on is actually time management and focus management. So if you're doing, let's just say so for fun, your practice is doing a gross revenue of 500,000 and you'd like to go to a million dollars in gross revenue or whatever your practice is doing, let's say it's doing a million, you wanna to go to five million. To get there, you currently have the time management habits and skills of a half a million dollar producer. To get to a million dollars, you have to actually shift your time management skills, <laughs> habits, now of a million dollar producer. Because to actually jump to the next level, we actually have to move your time management skills to the next level and grow the practice um, behind the skills. So we actually have to shift the skills ahead. Otherwise, the practice revenue stay right where they're at. Two, client development and marketing. This is really a fundamental business skill, getting clients in the door. And I don't care whether it's you improve your skills for advertising or if you're a referral-based practice, whatever it is, to get the practice to the next level, we have to up your game around client development and marketing. Three, and this is the, this is the secret sauce for a lot of big practices, and a lot of lawyers don't see this for years, like a maybe 10, 15, 20 years. Some, some never see it. To really scale a practice, you have to build a great team. To really grow the revenue of a practice, you have to build a great team. Now, not a good team, not an acceptable team, not a tolerable team, not a mediocre team, not a dependable team, but a great team. So if you're really looking to grow the practice, one of the secret elements to growth is thinking about how do you find, develop, train, manage, and lead a great team. This is the big difference between a good solo practice and a multi-million dollar solo practice is really the leadership and the management skills of the lawyer. Not their legal skills, but their leadership and management skills. And then last but not least, cash flow and profitability. And cash flow and profitability, under that I consider pricing. You know, how good are you doing collectibles? What are you doing on your profit margins? What are you doing here? So you're looking at these skills. These are all skills that provide context for growth. I don't care what size practice you have, if you're trying to take your practice to the next level, one of these skills have, has to be developed, played with, etc. 
Now, in our 30 years plus of working with lawyers, we found that these are the leverage points. So if you're looking to grow a practice, all of these things are like stools of a table. You've got to put each new stool in. So whatever the next level is, you've got to put that time management skills in, client development skills in, team development in, and cash flow and profitability to take the practice to the next level. So as we're thinking about our goals, I want you to think about it from the perspective of, okay, I got 2022 ahead of me. Of my growth goals, where am I lacking in certain skills? What can I bolster? What can I work on? What can I focus on? Okay, so that's the first thing that we're creating for context. Here's your second thing. Inside Atticus, behind the curtains, there's a formula, and we call it the Atticus change formula. If you're trying to implement change in your life, you need to appreciate how your brain works. And your brain really doesn't care if you're happy. Your brain really doesn't care anything other than that you're alive. So to get change to occur in your practice and get change to occur in your life, you need to harness your brain and harness certain behaviors. Now, I'm not going to do a deep dive on this conversation, but there's three elements here. Number one, to make a change, you need a compelling reason. And a compelling reason can be a great reason or it can be a terrifying reason. But it has to be a good enough reason that for your brain to get behind and push. So you have to have an exciting reason for your brain to go, okay, I got it. This is exciting. Like, I, I really want to push. Two is you need an accountability and follow-up structure. Now, this is why Weight Watchers, Alcoholics Anonymous, um, so many different habit change organizations are successful because they have follow-up and accountability structures. Now, you can read most of the leadership uh, work out there. You can look at all kinds of different studies, but most of the time, if you've learned something, you're going to discover that 98% of the time people fail to implement change just because they've learned something. They, without accountability and a follow-up structure, they won't implement change. This is how come if you tell your legal assistant, your paralegal, your associate, don't do it this way, and you come back a week later and they're still doing it that way, <laughs> it's because there wasn't accountability and follow-up structure. So this applies just in your life, also as a leader of your firm. And then third is guidance and coaching structure. What's your guidance and coaching structure? So if you're trying to train your team, if you're trying to train um, yourself, you need a compelling reason, accountability and follow-up, coaching and guidance. Everybody got it? Okay, without that, the success of implementing change is going to be very, very uh, in doubt. So if you're trying to get wind in your sails and push change forward, then you're going to start to appreciate, are these three elements behind my goals? Do I have a compelling reason? What's my accountability and follow-up structure? And what's my guidance and coaching structure? It's the secret sauce behind change. Now, as your firm grows, one of the biggest challenges that you'll have as a leader and thinker is how to help lead your team through change. So uh, starting to appreciate and understand how change works is a critical skill point. Now, inside of our world, inside of our programs, we also in the very, if you look at the screen, the very middle, we have the Atticus change formula that I just reviewed with you. And whoop, my, my PowerPoint messed up. The bottom right hand corner, it says foundations for growth. That's the four things that we just talked about. And then on the left hand side, continuous growth, continuous improvement. So those are your Kaizen fan fans, our Lean Six Sigma fans. That's really what we're referencing there. All of this rotates around your why. Your why is like the sun and these are the planets, the gravitational pull. So whatever your compelling reason is has to be strong enough to push you forward to allow you to implement change both in your life and your practice. So as we start to talk about goal setting, the most fundamental thing of goal setting is making sure you're crystal clear in your mind, why are you making the change? Why is this important? What's your follow-up and accountability structure? Where are you going to guidance and coaching? Where do you get support from? And 
how do you use those four critical business skills, those foundations for growth to support change in the growth of your practice? Okay. So I'm just a check in there for a second. Denise, Terry, anything either one of you want to add on that? Oh, you covered it great. Okay, thank you. Terry, you good? Okay, great. So the reason I spend this so I'm yes, just gonna ask how often the why changes and I mean you might have a certain why now, but five, ten years a different why. That's oh, that's a great question, Dennis. Uh that's a great question. Thank you. That's a terrific question. So for me, um I, I usually recommend that you're reviewing your why every 90 days so that you kind of have a core check-in. Now inside, our, we're going to send everybody on this in this workshop, our, our great life organizer. And those of you, um, and I'll talk to you about how to schedule a, a, a call with Denise and Terry, and they're going to help you kind of support you in implementing this. Inside this, on the very first um, see, page, basically a second page, is a a section, Dennis, where you put your why. Like, what are you up to? What's your lifetime legacy about? And what are your five lifetime goals? So in our programs, we typically have people reviewing this every 90 days. My experience is that a lot of people, Dennis, don't run out of... Um, a lot of lawyers, when they start their practices, kind of grow their practices past what their original goals were and it's not that they run out of um it's not that they're burned out it's not that they're just bored they just run out of a good why to get behind and push like so they need a good why so dennis is a great question i would recommend it every 90 days that you're at least revisiting it makes sense you. yeah great question very good question all right terrific so very good question so next topic so goal one We've just kind of laid the foundation. Dennis helped us clarify how often we want to think through our why. So goal one is I'm going to help you. We're going to spend some time thinking about your practice. And it's always going to be your business skills that drive growth, not your legal skills. And that's a difficult thing to wrap our brains around because if we, as lawyers, we've been trained that it's really our legal skills. No, our legal skills are how we serve the clients. If we own our practice or we're a shareholder or we're managing a practice, it's always going to be the business skills that drive the growth. And if we look at this, it's a very simple formula. you got to have great legal skills. You've got to marry those with terrific business skills. And that's really what produces a profitable practice. So if you're struggling somewhere in the profitability and you believe that you're a good lawyer, it's usually going to be an off on the business skills, not your legal skills. And that's typically what we found over time, that if we've got a lawyer who's really good but they're struggling on the financial side, it usually means that they're just lacking the business skills and the business skills are easily learned. They're a lot easier to learn than the legal skills, quite frankly. And as we do this, we have to kind of work a balance. We got a balance in our head. When am I working um, as a business owner and when am I working as a lawyer? And a lot of the time it has to do with what's on your desk. If it looks like a client file, then you're working as a lawyer. If it's anything but a client file, you're working as a business owner. So my rule of thumb, if it's a client email, if it's a client file, if it's a client referral source, maybe that might be a business, you know, a little bit of business, but if it's anything but that, it's more than likely that I am working on the business side, not the lawyer side. So it's an important distinction to start to wrap your brain around because as lawyers, we're hesitant to take risk on cases. And sometimes that hesitancy to take risk bleeds over to the business side. Most lawyers want to have all the facts first before they make a decision. They you know, want to make sure that they're making the best decision possible. And most business owners will never have all the facts. <clears throat> and that's the nature of risk. You know, we have to sometimes take a risk that we make assumptions like this is a good enough assessment. I got to make a judgment call on this marketing. I got to make a judgment call on this webinar. I got to make a judgment call on something to grow the business for it. Now, the last, not the last element of this, <clears throat> um, behind the scenes, we see lawyers go through three evolutions. Evolution one is learning how to manage themselves. And if you're solo with no support staff or one or two support staff, this is probably where you're at. You're trying to figure out how to manage yourself and get yourself more focused. 
the second thing that we see is what I call um, the second level of managing team. And this is where a lawyer is going to have business skills and their business skills probably give them the capability of managing somewhere between six to eight, maybe 12 to 14 team. And then they cap out. Then they cap out. Because what's happened is they've exceeded the span of management. To go to the next level of scalability, what they have to do is manage or reduce their span of management to three to six direct reports. And so if they're going to jump to the next level, what they have to actually be able to do is reduce the amount of people reporting to them somewhere between three to six at the most. And those people may have teams under them. But for a lawyer to continue to be the lead rainmaker, the lead practitioner, they have to have the capability of reducing the amount of management pressure on themselves. So to do that, they have to reduce the span of management. So what we see is practices kind of go like this. They go for a little bit. Then if the lawyer figures out how to go to the next level for managing, they kind of plateau. Then once they figure out how to kind of open up the span of management, then they do another jump. So it's never a straight line up. It's more like growth, plateau, growth, plateau, growth. And that's usually what we see. Now, behind all of this, as we think about goals, is the jelly bean jar problem. <sighs> to really grow a practice, most of us think our days need to look like this, where we're jamming in another to do, jamming in another thing. And the problem with this is, is that we have no room to implement change. And like I said before, if we're just dealing with a day like this, a day where we have a massive to-do list, a day where we're swatting interruptions, we're playing whack-a-mole with email, we're never going to be able to have time to work on the business to move it forward. So we actually have to, to implement growth. We actually have to move our calendar forward so we have some breathing room. So we have some breathing room in the calendar. If we don't have breathing room in the calendar, um, then we can't expand the practice. So if you're a owner, managing attorney, team leader, one of the most important things to actually move the organization forward is we probably have to get half of what's on your desk off. About what's half on your desk off, which is easier said than done, right? But if you're looking to say, well, I want to take my practice to the next level, I want to reduce my stress, I want to make more money, the first thing that we have to do is start to diagnose what your, what your day looks like because it's not really a question of you being more efficient like being more efficient with your time it's more of a question of being more effective with your time Peter Drucker the great management consultant said efficiency effectiveness is doing the right thing efficiency is doing the right thing well and as your practice grows kind of like what Dennis said earlier you have to re-choose what are the right things for me at this point in time in my practice so where you're at, it may be your fifth year practicing versus your 10th year versus your 15th year. Um, those right things, what you should be focusing on, shift and change. So you have to be able to kind of pivot and adjust to those and think about, is this the most effective use of my time? Is this really going to allow me to produce, produce the revenue, produce the impact that I want? And a lot of lawyers never figure out as they grow that they've got to make a a decision where they have to make a decision. The decision is, do I want to focus on strategy for growth or tasks for cash? And you have this dynamic where you've got to figure out where you're at with gross and net income, where you're at with time off, and you've got to figure out how to start adjusting that time template, your weekly focus on your practice. And my rule of thumb is I like to see about 20% of your time minimally focused on the practice, minimally focused on the practice. So if you've got four, if you've got a five day work week, that's basically saying I like to see one day working on the practice, four days working in the practice. So you have to start to think through everything from how you organize your time to how you bill, to how you collect, to how you manage your week to actually start to achieve those types of numbers. Okay. Terrific. Now, everybody okay? So we did some foundational work. Christine, you good? Jennifer, you good? Okay, good. 
great. Kimberly, good. All right, good, 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 good. So here's what I'd like to do. I'd like you just to take a deep breath. So we laid some foundational work. We did some conceptual work. What I'd like to do is just have you do a little bit of a sprint with me and say, you know, what am I planning for 2022? And I'm just going to give you a two minute sprint. And this is going to be on scrap paper, on a note, on the handy dandy yellow pad that we all have to have legal pad, right? As lawyers were required to use these things, right? Whatever, whatever it is that you want to write with, but I'm going to give you a two minute sprint just to get some thinking. Now this is a rough draft. All right. We're just getting some thoughts out of your head because we've talked about business skills. We talked about, um, different things and I just like to kind of get it out of your head and then we're going to move a little bit to the next exercise and the next exercise. So this is kind of like working with a personal trainer. We're going to do a little bit of a warm up and a stretch before we start to do our first heavy lift. Okay. Everybody ready? All right, so I'm going to set a timer. Abby, I got the timer on my handy dandy phone. And we're gonna do a two minute sprint. And I am going to start you right now for our first minute. What I'd like you to do is just write down some of the things that you'd love to be celebrating on December, 2022, one year from now. What are some of the things you'd love to be celebrating? All right, and I'm going to give you four different categories. One first category is going to be building skills for growth. And so I'm going to give you about 30 seconds to work on that. Then I'll give you 30 seconds to work on what you want to do on building your team. Then I'll give you 30 seconds to talk about time off and then 30 seconds to think about delegating tasks. Okay, and this is just a rough, 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 rough draft. Everybody ready? Okay. So 30 seconds, our first 30 second sprint. What are you going to do to work on your own business skills for building for growth in 2022? What are you going to focus on? Okay, so a quick couple ideas. Another 30 seconds. What are you gonna focus on to build a great team? Quality of your practice, we directly correlated the quality of your team. What are you gonna to do to build a great team? Hi to you, good? Okay, good, I'm watching you, I'm watching Dennis. Kimberly's very serious, there's Brian. All right, good, let's go to taking time off. Now, one of the critical things is, when I say time off, I mean no email, no phone call, no files, no checking the office. The purpose of time off is to allow your brain to heal for you to, to rejuvenate and come back to the office more creative. And what we've discovered is that if you try and work remotely, some of us call that vacation, you will not have the same outcome. So if we're able to go for a period of time that we actually don't work and we actually recreate to recreate, um, it makes a huge difference for us. So what I'd like you to put down is how many days off this year you'd like to have with no email, no phone calls, like no work. My record is six months. In one year, I've done that twice, two six month periods in one year, that's my record. My goal this year is six weeks. 
off with no emails, no phone calls, no client work. And these are revocable. These are not irrevocable. These are revocable goals. We're just rough drafting them. No tattoos from the workshop. Just asking you to look at it. All right, very good. Go ahead and post in the chat box how many days you're going for off. Just go ahead and post in the chat box how many days you're going for off. Go in the chat box and say, I'm going for, you can say, for the love of God, if I can get one day off, I'll be happy. If I get two days off, I'll be good. If I can get 10 days off, I'll be great. Some of you have spouse and children. I always have to negotiate with my wife on time off. It's always a negotiation. Very good. Excellent. Four weeks, I love Leroy. And that means not surgery four weeks, it's time off four weeks, right? 60 days, Morgan, I don't know if that's a time off for vacation. I don't just Yeah, saying. yeah, it's not. I don't think it is. I think that's, I don't think that is. So, um, so Wendy, where are you at this on my screen? Wendy, Wendy, where are you at? Unmute yourself for me if you could. Hey there. Hey, Good Wendy. Morning. Yeah. Hey, so yours is a great one. So one of yours is like a lot of solo practitioners. I'm going to give I'm you. Not, a yeah, I'm not a solo. I actually have a partner. Um, but he's retiring this year, so I'm yeah. taking over the practice, and I have two associates. Gotcha. So I'm very good at not checking in much, you know, throughout the day, but I feel like in the morning, I just want to check in with everyone and make sure they're doing what they need to be doing. Yeah, so the two, two things we got to make sure we think about is, um, in that particular case, is what I like to call the lawyer on call. And so what we do is we start to develop a relationship. A lot of the Atticus people do this with each other. They basically will become the lawyer on call for that practice. And so they basically become like the managing partner on call if the associates need something. If, they, if, if you're out of town and you're like in Paris having a great time, Wendy, you know, if the associates need something and there's an emergency motion filed, they can't track you down because you're, you know, you, you might be doing the, the, um, I don't know, you might be on the Eiffel Tower doing something really fun in Paris, right? So they can't track you down. So they have to have a lawyer on call. Two, you have to teach someone how to manage your email. And so you have to start thinking about who manages and does my email intake. Um, so there's all, so that's probably the two biggest things that I see that prevent lawyers from taking time off. Is they haven't taught someone how to manage the email intake and they haven't taught, they haven't found a backup lawyer for being, um, out of the office. And I have a lot of lawyers trade being the lawyer on call for each other. So you usually find a peer at your point in time in life that you trust. And there's usually, you know, especially family law lawyers are pretty collaborative. So you got to find a family law lawyer that you feel comfortable with it to be the lawyer on call. Elder law lawyers do this. Estate planning lawyers do this. Some of the PI lawyers do this. They have a lawyer on call. Um, having a phenomenal team leader makes a huge difference, but that's one of the things. So when I saw your concern, I, I wanted to jump on it real quick because that's usually a big concern. So it's a great one, Wendy. So thank you. Thank you for unmuting and talking to me about it. Sure. All right. So our next one, our final 30 second sprint is I want to look for three tasks that you're going to delegate this year. Three strategic tasks that by the end of this year, you won't be doing It's either by saying no are by hiring somebody or delegating them out. So, so when we're looking in 2022, you say these are three things. And my first place, the place that I suggest you look is things that you hate. Things that you're like, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? This is stupid. For most lawyers that are solo and small firm attorneys, it's usually bookkeeping. <laughs> why are you doing bookkeeping? Uh, two, uh, one of the biggest things is uh, domestic work. I'm a big fan of delegating any and all forms of domestic work. I have a 15 to 20 hour work uh, person a week that works in my house that handles everything from 
uh, cleaning to grocery shopping to the dogs to a uh, handyman, you know, so I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to come home to doing chores. I don't want to run to Walmart. Um, although Amazon's pretty amazing. You can order about anything and think of off of Amazon and have it delivered in your house, you know, the next day. But, you know, what, what are three things that you delegate? So go ahead and write those down for me. The Leroy had a question. Can you give an example of building growth skills? Yeah. So that's a great question. So Leroy, for me, um, one might be that I may create a game of getting 50 new referral sources in 2022. So if I'm looking to build, I want to get 50 new referral sources in 2022. One of the first, uh, I usually, with solo and small firm lawyers, I usually like to see them have about 100 A plus referral sources. So I usually like to see, most of the time we get so busy we don't pay attention to proactively developing our, our referral skills. I love referral work because it's cheap, meaning you don't have to spend any money for advertising. Two, um, once you develop a good referral relationship, they're very loyal. Three, they're usually refer people that are not as, as price sensitive as, as somebody who might be advertising off the interwebs or responding to a blog. Um, they might be you know, a, a better quality prospect. And I also like to referral sources to refer work to personally. Uh, when I was practicing, I hyper-focused my practice and I had a lot of really great lawyers that referred work to um, because I didn't want to do it. And uh, so I really hyper-focused my practice. I really didn't do a lot of different things in my practice that a lot of lawyers would do. Um, so I, when I was doing estate planning elder law, I didn't do any guardianship work and I wouldn't take any probate or trust administration work that was under a certain threshold price point wise. So I refer those out to other lawyers. Uh, and I practiced in Tampa and it was the guardianship process in Tampa. While it's very good judges, very good caseworker, it just wasn't profitable. Um, so it was just miserable. So we just learned to refer work to people that were willing to do that work and get paid a miserable amount of money for it. I usually like the what we call the ELF case, easy, lucrative, and fun. If it's easy, I liked it. If it was lucrative, I liked it. And if it was fun, I liked it. But you can't get those kind of cases unless you have a strong referral base. So a lot of lawyers get their pricing and their cash flow confused. Um, like, well, I have cash flow problems. Usually the cash flow problems are directly correlated to marketing problems. And if you're a solo and small firm lawyer, you don't have a lot of money to spend, a lot of time to spend. The best way to build a really good referral base, I mean, the best thing to do is build a really good referral base quickly. So does that help, Leroy? All right, good. Very good. So good. Everybody okay? All right, thank you, Terry. So let's go to the next topic. Next topic. So we just did a really quick rough draft of some ideas. What I want to do is kind of go backwards and work on what worked in 2021. What I'd like you to do is take this worksheet that's up on your screen and we're going to call this, um, we're just going to do a little sprint. And I know it sounds silly, but I'm going to encourage you to put your name and date on the worksheet, even though you're the only person filling it out. You know, but I'd like you to put your name and date on the worksheet. I do this all the time. Um, I name and date my, I put my name and date on the worksheets and then I'll go back and what I do with all my worksheets, all of them, I scan them. And so I keep all of my worksheets from all my programs. I scan them and I, I'm a big OneNote fan, so I like to put them in OneNote. Sometimes for those of you who don't like OneNote, Evernote's wonderful. If you don't like Evernote, put them in Dropbox. If you don't like Dropbox, put them somewhere on your um, hard drive and save them under you know, goal setting 2022 folder, whatever works for you. But I'm going to encourage you to date and look at these. I have, I have goals, my working worksheets that I've had from 20 to 25 years ago, still in OneNote. And so I have all of my, and I like to go back occasionally just to get my a confidence boost to see where my thinking was 20 years ago when my kids were young <laughs> to where they're at today. So it's really fun to think about. So I always encourage you to keep it. Everybody got it? Everybody ready? All right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to walk you through a couple of, we're just gonna do a sprint on this, and I'm going to walk you through a process. I want you to think about what worked in 2021. What are the things that you're celebrating that were terrific about 2021? 
And I'm going to, you know, I want you to think about health, money, finance, relationships, home. Uh, what worked about your marketing, what might have worked about your office, what worked about your mindset, what are the things that really worked? And I have an example for you, all right? So I can show you this is my example. Um, this is my example. So it's literally, uh, you, some of you joined earlier, heard Leroy talking, Leroy and I were talking. I had a rotator cuff surgery. Um, so I had it in February of last year. The doctor said that I'd be lucky to do one push up by the end of December, 2021. Uh, I officially did 20. So for me, my goal was to do as many as I possibly could. Thank you, Jennifer. So I did 20, 20 times more than the doctor predicted. So I had a really good year. You know, I've lost uh, probably 20 pounds that I picked up during COVID. I started exercising again. I started feeling good. I had some quality time with my kids. Um, our organizer got redesigned. We had a great year financially. So our finances went great, great innovations. And my team, the Atticus team, our team was phenomenal. You know, just absolutely phenomenal. So these were some of the things that worked for me. I'm gonna walk through the other boxes in a moment, but I'm just gonna ask you to take a couple of minutes and write down on your worksheet, what worked for you? How did you do in health? How was your health in 2022? Where did you make progress? Leroy got two new knees. He got two for one. His orthopedist is very happy with them, right? So write down how you did. Some of you started meditating. Some of you got meditation sweatshirts even, which is pretty cool. Finances. How do you do financially out of 2021? Are you happy with your gross? Are you happy with your net? How did you do? Did you make progress over the prior year? Then relationships. Those of you that are in a committed relationship, whether married or living together or partnering with somebody. Those of you with children. Those of you with elderly parents. I have an 89 year old father. My in-laws. I believe next year I'll be celebrating 30 years of marriage. I need to figure that out between now and next year, right, Denise? That's probably a good idea. I need to figure that out there. Yeah, I know. Thank you. I'll have to do the math on that. I'll figure that out. I know how much you love math. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> Samantha, we'll have to figure out that. <laughs> so relationships, how did you do on relationship? Most important relationships. How do you do on making improvements to your home? Is your home a place of beauty that you feel happy about? Are there things that you're tolerating about your home? But right now, you know, where did you make progress? And then your team, how did you do with your team? Uh, Atticus, we hired one, two, Three new hires. 
And then last week we hired two more. Very happy with them. Samantha got promoted. Then marketing. How are you doing on your marketing? What worked in 2021 about marketing? And I know I'm hitting a lot. And then I'm going to let you pick one more. Whatever else you want to declare as a win in 2021. Now, here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to look at your celebrations from 2021, and I'd like you to say, what are the, what's the most important lessons out of 2021? So for me, I pick three, just maybe three, two or three lessons. For me, um, my first big lesson was complacency steals time. You know, COVID forced a lot of creativity for our organization. Um, and I realized I don't need crisis to create. Two, at all times I need to protect my team. We have a terrific team and I do not want them burned out or worn out. I need to protect them. And three, a lot of our best ideas came from collaboration with people like you, like our clients. Our clients told us what they needed and we designed things to support them on what they needed. Like the organizer. So I look at that, what are the lessons from 2021 that I want to move forward? The second box here is what new habits, processes, or performance improvements do you want to keep that occurred out of 2021? And one of the things that I learned for me was I needed sacred space for time to think. No email, no phone call, <laughs> the computer's off. I need somewhere to think and have quiet time. Two, I love Teams and Zoom meetings because I found them very productive. And we discovered Zoom workshops were pretty cool, like this, because people don't want to travel. So what new habits, processes, or performance improvements happened to you in 2021 that you want to make sure you carry forward in 2022?
You guys are doing great. We're going to move to the next box. What's the most important things to protect? Now, these are my three. These can be any three that you want, whatever works for you. Uh, one was my focus. It's really important that I have focus on my people and my clients and be clear what they want from me. Two, protect my creativity. And three, um, I have to stay focused on what are the points of leveraged impact for our company. Where are the things that I do that cause the greatest impact financially for our team? So this is my effectiveness conversation. I, I have to pay attention to the things that I'm effective at. And the last part for me is what's the most important insight of this exercise? And the thing I learned for me the past year was a reshuffling of my card deck, so to speak. Um, I don't have to go back to how things were in 2021 or 2020. I get to choose the cards I want to play. And so I get to re-choose the things that are most important to me. And so that's the really cool thing about doing something like this. It gives me an opportunity to take a moment and think, even though it's a five to 10 minute sprint, I get an opportunity to stop and catch my breath and go, really, what's most important to me? And how do I capture that? What really came out of 2021 for me that I really want to make sure I protect? Okay. Excellent. Everybody okay? Is this useful? Give me a thumbs up if this was a good little sprint. Yeah, very good. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So I'm going to take you to the next stage of this conversation. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you. I'm going to take you to the next next part of this conversation, which is, okay, we've kind of done our thinking here, and we're going to take it one more level, one more next move, which is what we call the learning bridge. Now, in our organizer, you'll see one of these at the end of every week because I want you to take a moment at the end of every week and pay attention to what you learned about the, the past week. So if you look at that, I'm going to have you just take a moment and say, okay, looking at 2021, what did I learn? What worked about 2021 and what didn't work about 2021? And if you want to, uh, I'll just give you a quick example of mine. So in 2021, um, what did I learn? Well, I improved my health and fitness over the past 90 days. Um, I hired Kathleen, who's um, not on the call with us. She's phenomenal, uh, and she's been terrific. Promoted Samantha, and our annual summit was amazing. I was very, very happy about it. So it turned out much better than I thought. And so what worked was, you know, improved my health, increased my confidence. I feel better, and I've increased my energy. Hiring Kathleen, the quality of our team of growth is correlated. Um, in my mind, meaning that the more talented people I hire, the more our revenue goes up. And the more all-stars I have on our team, the greater impact they have on our clients' lives. And our summit was amazing. 350 of our great clients coming together, celebrating their success and starting to plan for 2022. So I was very happy about that. Uh, what didn't work, so what didn't work about 2021 was we had a web, uh, our webmaster, our web designing, uh, one of our web designers quit without any form of notice. Um, hurt us because of many projects. We're struggling to replace her quickly. So we didn't have enough capacity in that department. Two, struggling with the accuracy of some of our dashboards for, for tracking and measurement. And three, um, one of the courses that I started teaching this year on parenting and practicing, which was one of the, one of the passions for me as a, a father, 
is helping lawyers just learn how to balance being a good parent and a good practitioner. You can't be amazing at all, but you can be good at both. So thinking through how to do that. And that, that course has not gotten the traction, I hoped. I thought it'd be a lot more traction. So I'm not sure, I don't think, um, I don't think it's made these attractive as I thought. So top three lessons, what did I learn? Um, I'm recovering from surgery quicker than I thought. Uh, how can I improve? I'd like to see my body fat down uh, by at least 15% by the end of the first 90 days while increasing muscle mass. Uh, two, Kathleen needs more support, which we're moving forward on. We've got two new hires, probably need two more. Um, I need to keep guesstimating what we need about six months out, not 90 days out. Um, parenting and partnering may be too big of a bite for a lot of our clients, so I, I may have to reboot that whole thing. And three ways I can improve my performance. Number one, I gotta remember, to stay focused on my health and fitness. I gotta keep driving my strength training and benchmarking weekly. Um, and the stronger and more confident I feel, the better my energy is, the more I can push and implement change in the company. So I have to remember, I have to keep taking care of myself. Two, keep pushing Kathleen to let go, hire, and delegate. Um, I'm not saying she has control issues, but I think she has control issues. So I need to get her to delegate more and get more talent on her team. And we have some talented folks, I need more. And then three, I need to test more. And so some of the ideas that I think are testable, I need to get out there in the marketplace and experiment them more. So that's my example, and I'm just kind of sharing with you an example. So if you look at back at 2021 for you, and you say, okay, wow, this is what I did. This is some of the lessons I learned, what worked, what didn't work. What are my top three lessons, and how can I improve my performance? Everybody good? I'll let you work for a few minutes on this. And this is just a sprint, okay? If you want to go back and revisit this, you can, because I know I'm really pushing a lot of information at you. But this is really designed to get you thinking. You'll probably do more thinking and revision of your thinking on this over the next day or two.
Okay, if you're done, give me a thumbs up. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Jennifer. Morgan, thank you. Stephanie, you good? Thank you, thank you. Good, 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 good. Everybody all right? Now, most of the work that we're doing today is designed to kind of expand your thinking and not complete your thinking. So I'm going to move us to the next exercise together. And the next exercise we've gone We've done a lot of learning, but the next exercise is going to be really focused on growth planning. Not really focused on, we've been focused on growth planning all morning, or all afternoon, excuse me. Uh, is we're going to focus on looking at your growth for 2022. And I want to think about the big pictures because sometimes when we do really deep dives in this, we sometimes get into the weeds. And I got to pull us out of the weeds a little bit and think about the garden, the big picture. I got to get us a little bit out of the reactive experience of 2021 and start thinking about the big picture of 2022. And so what I'd like you to do is I'd like to talk about what are the three most important goals for 2022. What are the three big rocks? We like to call them the three major rocks, the three things that will be the bedrock of your thinking for 2022. Now, for some folks... Um, it'll be different, you know, it'll be different. I'll share with, I'll share mine in a moment, but really what I want you to be thinking about is what are the three big things you want to be celebrating December of 2022? Like if we're all getting together, having a, another virtual zoom party together and you're saying, Hey, this was a great year because I achieved number one, number two, and number three. So, um, what I'd like you to do do is use this worksheet right here. Whoops, I got 2021 here. Check your worksheet, make sure it doesn't say 2021. It should say 2022. What's your worksheet say? 2021? Did I give you the wrong worksheet? All right, you know what that means? On the evaluation, you can mark down Denise. See, Denise messed up the worksheet. No, so what you're going to have to do is edit the worksheet, but 2022. All right, sorry about that, I apologize. My mistake. Abby, I know you're catching that to revise that one already, aren't you? Yeah, you're like, okay. We reviewed this presentation. Yeah, four times, I reviewed it four times and I missed that. Four times, four times. Thank God there's not a statute of limitations for these things. All right. So what are the three big things that you want to be celebrating in 2022, end of 
first one for me will be celebrating being the best shape that I've been in a very, very long time by the end of 2022. Two is I have certain goals, financial goals, I'd like to complete by 2022. And my third is I have a certain amount of time with my family. My daughter is 21. She's a junior at university. My son's a freshman. And we have blocked off time to uh, spend time together uh, this in 2022. So as you look at 2022, you want to think, what are the three things that you want to be celebrating at the end of 2022? If you don't know, that's okay. Just say, you know, I actually haven't thought about it. That's why I'm on this web on the on this virtual workshop. I haven't thought about it. And that's the purpose of the workshop is to get you to think about it. One of the reasons that we have you speak and write in workshops is to engage your prefrontal cortex. So we don't have a lot of time to talk about brain science today, but your prefrontal cortex is your problem solving component of your brain. And the two ways that you engage it is by speaking and writing. So in all of our workshops, we have worksheets and we have you talking to people because that allows the anxiety to go away and allows it to go from anxiety to problem, problem to thinking. And your brain is a phenomenal problem solving tool if you tell it what you want it to solve. And as lawyers, um, we are highly trained problem solvers. We just need to be clear what is the problem that we're trying to solve. So using that beautiful brain of yours to think about how to move things forward is a fantastic use of it. So what I'd like to do is, Abby, I'd like to send us into a breakout. I'd like to send us into Paris. I'd like us to do about a 10 minute breakout. Can you make that work for me? Okay. And what I'd like you to do is when you go to a breakout, you're gonna have five minutes each. And I Jelly beans. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect. So I'm going to back up here because I, I'm on the wrong side. So welcome. Welcome back. So you just kind of declared your three big goals for 2022. Part of your investment in this workshop includes a couple of things. One is uh, probably the most valuable thing. Um, and I think Denise and Terry will agree it's more valuable than listening to me. You get to have what we consider a practice growth diagnostic with them. Now, what I want you to do is I'm going to ask Denise and Terry to post in the chat box their scheduling links. So I want you to jump on this as soon as you, they post a link so you can schedule. Because what I'm going to ask them to do is I'm going to ask them to spend time with you on your three big rocks and your time template, which I'll discuss with you in a second. Mine didn't work the way it's supposed to, Steve. Pardon? When I put the scheduling link in there, it didn't work. So let me Mine either. Work. It didn't work. Neither one of those worked. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to have to pop them an email. Sorry, Denise, yes. Terry, you're going to have to pop your, yes. your, your folks that you've been, you know, an email to get them the scheduling links. And so I apologize that for that folks. Uh, it's not working in the chat box for whatever reason. Um, yeah, it's not. Look at that. Hmm. Okay, so what you want to do is take advantage of that that way. And I'd like you to do that in the next 24 to 48 hours while your thinking is fresh. All right. Possibility has a very short shelf life in a very busy practice. And you have an opportunity to work with these two amazing professionals to focus on your garden and get out of the weeds. And the quicker you get on it, the quicker you get the momentum. Two is that they're going to confirm how to get you your organizer. And what we've part of your investment in this is the Atticus Migrate Life Organizer, which we showed to you earlier, but includes about 22 of our concepts, everything from the Migrate Life concept to the strategic, to the cash flow focuser, to um, a handful of other tools from tolerations to really thinking through how to organize your day. So they're going to spend a few minutes with you to get you on that. Now, while they're doing that, uh, I'm going to give you just two quick time management tips from my perspective. 
Um, so while Denise and Terry are popping you emails to schedule, uh, I'm going to go ahead and give you a couple of time management tips uh, that I'm going to encourage you to look at. So as a practitioner and as a coach, uh, one of the things I want you to be careful of is not being trapped by your calendar. There's a big difference between being focus driven and calendar driven. Your calendar is to organize appointments. It doesn't organize your thinking. And a lot of lawyers, because they get tired and worn down, get trapped and they get drowning in the flow of that calendar. You know, they just get flowing in it and they lose it. So I'm going to recommend that every day, no matter what, you spend 15 to 30 minutes organizing your day. And the only thing I want you to be clear on, what are the three most important things to do for that day? What are the three most important things to do? I don't care if you use our organizer. I don't care if you use another organizer. I don't care if you use a post-it note or a napkin. I don't care, but I want you to write it. I want you to specifically write and say, these are the three most important things I've got to do today. Um, we're going to also give you a time template. I'm going to spend one or two minutes over our workshop time to talk about this briefly. And this time template is basically to help you think through what an ideal week is like. So what we're going to do is give this worksheet to you. Um, and what we're going to encourage you to do is to kind of draft it out. Now, Terry and Denise are going to spend some time talking to you about how to best do that in your specific practice. So in this example up here is an example of a... I believe a litigation practice, you know, and you know, we understand that you can always control your litigation practice. They sometimes are um, very difficult to control. I will quickly concede that from my years of litigating, but you want to start thinking about this so you can organize how you want the week to work so you can communicate it to your team so they know how to schedule and organize things for you. So it starts to become a foundational concept. So Terry and Denise will work with you on that. Um, and then upcoming workshops, and then we're gonna take a couple of takeaways and call it a day, all right? Uh, our upcoming workshops, we're teaching February 4th in Orlando. I'm leading a workshop, I believe, I think it's me. Uh, on double your revenue it's one of our flagship workshops it's a one-day workshop it's not being led by me it's going to be led by somebody even better which is our, our founder and president mark powers phenomenal coach phenomenal instructor um, and then we're also going to do one live stream for those of you that are hesitant to travel and on april 21st and july 29th this is a, a workshop that's really just designed to help you take your firm two times what it's currently doing then our upcoming start for coaching programs, uh, our practice growth program, we have one starting February 28th and starting May 19th. And so those are the upcoming programs I want to make sure I'm making you aware of. Denise, Terry, anything to ha add to that before I move to the completion slide? Yeah, you covered it. Okay, terrific. Thank you. And so what I'd like you to do in the chat box for me is go ahead and post what your biggest takeaway was of the day. Like what was the thing that made today worth it? Um, so, oh great, thank you. Thank you, um, Dennis, thanks for posting that. So go ahead and post whatever your takeaway is for today. And I will be hanging out um, if you have any questions for a few minutes afterwards, but go ahead and post your takeaway for me. Thank you, Wendy. Spending time to think about your practice, fantastic. Free focus on my why, Heidi, excellent. Yeah, Heidi, it's a good one. You know, you, you, gotta, you gotta be clear on the why. Time to plan is critical. I think that's the biggest thing that most lawyers overlook. Uh, and they just don't take time to plan. Yeah, driving the calendar versus having the calendar drive me. Scott, that's perfect. Really good, really good work. And you have to take the time away from the calendar to think about how to drive the firm more so than anything else. Yep, very good, Morgan. Excellent work. Very good. I'm going to stop my sharing so I can see you guys as a gallery. Beautiful. Very good. All right, Kimberly, thank you. Thanks, I understand you got another meeting. So what I'm going to do is just declare us complete for today. I'm gonna to hang out here. I'm gonna ask Terry and Denise to hang out for a few minutes to see if there's any 
questions that anybody has. So we'll just stay here for about 10 or 15 minutes if that works. Abby, you I don't know if you're still recording. Go ahead and stop recording if you want.